capital punishment is currently authorized in 27 states by the federal government and the U.S. military. In recent years, New Mexico, Illinois, Connecticut, Maryland, New Hampshire, Colorado and Virginia have legislatively abolished the death penalty, replacing it with a sentence of life imprisonment with no possibility for parole. The Nebraska legislature also abolished capital punishment in 2015, but it was reinstated by a statewide vote in 2016. Additionally, courts in Washington and Delaware recently ruled that the state's capital punishment laws are unconstitutional. States across the country will continue to debate its fairness, reliability and cost of implementation. The primary means of execution in the U.S. have been hanging, electrocution, the gas chamber, firing squad, and lethal injection. The Supreme Court has never found a method of execution to be unconstitutional, though some methods have been declared unconstitutional by state courts. The predominance of lethal injection as the preferred means of execution in all states in the modern era may have put off any judgment by the court regarding older methods. Because of the resistance by drug manufacturers to provide the drugs typically used in lethal injections, some states now allow the use of alternative methods if lethal injection cannot be performed. Controversies surrounding the method to be used have delayed executions in many states, contributing to an overall decline in the use of the death penalty. Lethal injection is the practice of injecting one or more drugs into a person for the express purpose of causing rapid death. The main application for this procedure is capital punishment, but the term may also be applied in a broader sense to include euthanasia and other forms of suicide. The drugs cause the person to become unconscious, stops their breathing, and causes a heart arrhythmia. First developed in the United States, it has become a legal means of execution in China, Thailand, Guatemala, Taiwan, the Maldives, Nigeria, and Vietnam. Though Guatemala has not conducted an execution since 2000 and the Maldives has never carried out an execution since its independence, Although Taiwan permits lethal injection as an execution method, no executions have been carried out in this manner. The same is true for Nigeria. Lethal injection was also used in the Philippines until the country re-abolished the death penalty in 2006. Lethal injection gained popularity in the late 20th century as a form of execution intended to supplant other methods, notably electrocution, gas inhalation, hanging and firing squad, that were considered to be less humane. It is now the most common form of legal execution in the United States. Lethal injection was proposed on January 17, 1888, by Julius Mount Blyer, a New York doctor who praised it as being cheaper than hanging. Blyer's idea was never used, due to a series of botched executions and the eventual rise of public disapproval in electrocutions. Lethal injections were first used by Nazi Germany to execute prisoners during World War II. Nazi Germany developed the Action T4 euthanasia program, as one method to dispose of life unworthy of life. In the United States, the typical lethal injection begins with the condemned person being strapped onto a gurney. Two intravenous canulas are then inserted one in each arm. Only one is necessary to carry out the execution. The other is reserved as a backup in the event the primary line fails. A 
the line leading from the IV line in an adjacent room is attached to the prisoner's IV and secured so that the line does not snap during the injections. The arm of the condemned person is swabbed with alcohol before the cannula is inserted. The needles and equipment used are sterilized. Questions have been raised about why these precautions against infection are performed despite the purpose of the injection being death. The several explanations include, cannulae are sterilized and have their quality heavily controlled during manufacture, so using sterile once is a routine medical procedure. Secondly. The prisoner could receive a stay at execution after the cannuli have been inserted, as happened in the case of James Autry in October 1983. Third, use of unsterilized equipment would be a hazard to the prison personnel in case of an accidental needle stick. Following connection of the lines, saline drips are started in both arms. This, too is standard medical procedure. It must be ascertained that the IV lines are not blocked, ensuring the chemicals have not precipitated in the IV lines and blocked the needle, preventing the drugs from reaching the subject. A heart monitor is attached to the inmate. In most states, the intravenous injection is a series of drugs given in a set sequence designed to first induce unconsciousness followed by death through paralysis of respiratory muscles, and or by cardiac arrest through depolarization of cardiac muscle cells. The execution of the condemned in most states involves three separate injections. Sodium theopental or pentobarbital, otrashort action barbiturate, an anesthetic agent used at a high dose that renders the person unconscious in less than 30 seconds. Depression of respiratory activity is one of the characteristic actions of this drug. Consequently, the lethal injection doses the sodium theopental will even in the absence of the following two drugs cause death due to lack of breathing, as happens with overdoses of opioids. Pancuronium bromide, non-depolarizing muscle relaxant, which causes complete, fast, and sustained paralysis of the skeletal striated muscles, including the diaphragm and the rest of the respiratory muscles. This would eventually cause death by asphyxiation. Potassium chloride, a potassium salt which increases the blood and cardiac concentration of potassium to stop the heart via an abnormal heartbeat and thus cause death by cardiac arrest. The drugs are not mixed externally to avoid precipitation. A sequential injection is also key to achieve the desired effects in the appropriate order. Administration of the pentobarbital renders the person unconscious. The infusion of the pancuronium bromide induces complete paralysis, including that of the lungs and diaphragm rendering the person unable to breathe. If the person being executed were not already completely unconscious, the injection of a highly concentrated solution of potassium chloride could cause severe pain at the site of the IV line, as well as along the punctured vein. It interrupts the electrical activity of the heart muscle and causes it to stop beating, bringing about the death of the person being executed. The intravenous tubing leads to a room next to the execution chamber, usually separated from the condemned by a curtain or a wall. Typically, a prison employee trained in venipuncture inserts the needle, while a second prison employee orders prepares, and loads the drugs into the lethal injection syringes. Two other staff members take each of the three syringes and secure them into the eyes. After the curtain is opened to allow the witnesses to see inside the chamber, the condemned person is then permitted to make a final statement. Following this, 
The warden signals that the execution may commence, and the executioner. Then manually inject the three drugs in sequence. During the execution, the condemned's cardiac rhythm is monitored. Death is pronounced after cardiac activity stops. Death usually occurs within seven minutes, although, due to complications in finding a suitable vein, the whole procedure can take up to two hours. As was the case with the execution of Christopher Newton on May 24, 2007. According to state law, if a physician's participation in the execution is prohibited for reasons of medical ethics, then the death ruling can be made by the state medical examiner's office. After confirmation that death has occurred, a coroner signs the condemned death certificate. Thank you for watching Death Row.